So, um, for our next speaker, uh, sometimes you have to fill a dev room, you don't really know what to do, and then there is one guy who's like, oh, I like to talk. So, I'll present myself. Uh, the talk is from me. We'll still be super strict about the timing, so I'll probably, I also have a demo that might work, and probably like it worked yesterday, but this morning kind of, and so we'll, I'll just ask you to cross your fingers. But anyway, we try. So, 25 minutes. Uh, high and augmented reality using JavaScript. That's the JavaScript dev room. So high and augmented reality means, in my opinion, the best uh, commercially available device. Uh, you can take photo of this slide, but the very last slide of the presentation is a big SQL code that allows you to take all the slides, all the links, everything. So what are we going to see? So what's AR? What are the limitations of AR when it's native? Uh, what's AR in the browser? Specifications, because it's so exciting topic. Uh, hardware, like an experiment live that might kind of work, but we'll see. I have video backup just in case. Uh, so am I. I'm Fabien. What do I do? Um, I work for the European Parliament. Uh, I can't really say what I do there, so that's just me smiling at a conference. Uh, I also work for UNICEF. Um, UNICEF has, who knows UNICEF? Okay. Who know? keep your hands up if you know if UNICEF has an innovation fund? Okay, more than, more than zero, so I'm pretty happy. For uh, others who don't know, um, I'll also put a link at the end, but uh, yes, you can also do uh, tech for good. I also, I'm a Mozilla tech speaker and volunteer, so um, I present some of my VR and AR work there at um, Mozilla All Hands uh, last year. So, to get everybody excited, a topic like we're not debate uh, VI and Emacs because that's okay, too hot, but what makes code beautiful? Uh, so, is that beautiful code? I don't know if you can see in the back, but uh, is that beautiful code? Is that beautiful code? That's beautiful. So we have different, <laughs> too colorful. Um, so the idea is that um, it's kind of an excuse for me to show you after the shittiest code you've ever seen, but to argue a little bit why it's so shitty. Uh, in my opinion, that's beautiful code in terms of exploration. So that's a presentation from Brett Victor uh, on how you can have a problem to solve and if you have a way to have a vision of what's happening in the background so that you don't have to process it yourself but let the computer do it for you, then you're going somewhere. So that's beautiful if you're an artist or if you have to explore, let's say, a new API. That's beautiful code if you're doing, if you're in a demo scene. So if you have to do a 4K demo, uh, if you had to be really compact, then that's the kind of code you want. And that's beautiful code if you're Linux Torvald and if you think maintenance and clarity is impactful. So, <laughs> so that's up to you. Um, but yes, be, expect the shittiest code you've ever seen. Uh, what's augmented reality? So who has tried a HoloLens? Okay, who has tried like a little app on your phone to see like how to paint your nails or uh, how to change shoes or whatnot? Okay, who has coded anything for AR? Okay, quite a few, cool. Who has coded anything for AR on the web? Okay, so somebody know it's possible. Cool. Um, so I think, I think AR is really cool, that's why I work in AR. But I think also uh, it's a lot of hype, and I think at the very beginning when you want to have AR, you're pretty much ready to do anything, which means including uh, in downloading and then installing an app that lasts about, I don't know, five minutes, and then use the app for about one minute. So that's not really worth it. Like you spend more time installing the app than running it. So I think if you're not those big guys, uh, nobody actually cares about your app. No offense, but in terms of numbers. Um, so yeah, just, just don't make an app for two minutes experience if it takes you longer to download it. And most of AR now is just bite-sized experience. Just a little taste, just a little something, but you're not going to spend three hours on it. So AR, the definition, it's pretty simple. It's augmented reality, so that teapot doesn't actually exist. And it has a URL. That's it. That's the one, one key thing to uh, bring home. Or just, just for historical... Uh, uh, it started in Georgia Tech. I mean, of course, if you do history in tech, it always go back earlier, but in my, less you, in my opinion, that's where it really started, uh, with um, Blair McIntyre, now at Mozilla. Specs, specs, specs. Uh, the promise, of course, of WebAR is it's run on every machine possible. 
So it means that uh, all the major uh, browser vendor, all the major uh, hardware need to have it running. So the idea is to have a debate, a discussion on what is like your specific device that is the most exciting, but still get together on what makes a proper API. So basically what you need for your Lack, of, lack for virtual reality is the position of the headset in space. Let's say I start here, I'm at zero, zero, zero. I step forward, I'm at zero, one, no, zero, zero, one. Well, it depends on your code in the system, but basically that you need to keep track of your position in space. Same for the controllers. So that's, let's say, the basics. So that's uh, an emulator um, plugin for Chrome, if I remember correctly, that emulates the XR API. So you can virtually have a virtual headset in your browser so you can move it around. So yeah, the specs are changing all the time um, and hardware support uh, grows. So basically hardware support goes from the HoloLens at the bottom to the Google Tango to your I normal iPad uh, to any kind of random phone with a camera as long as you have a marker on it. Um, so this kind of device is about 3000 bucks. Uh, the HoloLens is about the same price, so it's pretty expensive. I don't have it at home just for fun. I don't think it's worth it yet. But still, when you have an expensive device like this, then you have a depth camera, then you have a bunch of extra sensors, and all the processing is done on the device. So it is, in my opinion, not worth it yet for an individual, but as a professional, it's the best way to explore. And then there is a new contender, uh, Magic Leap, just um, made this device public for creators in July, I think, last year. Um, so the concept of really how it's working. So you have um, motion tracking, so you're able to see in space thanks to either the depth camera or the RGB camera, and you do fusion of those sensors. So you're able to see really when you are from one point to the next. Um, so you have different techniques for it. And out of this, both your movement and a uh, uh, scan of the room or wherever you're at, you gain room knowledge. So for example, as you probably have tried before, where, where are the flat surfaces? That's usually where you will put objects on. Or the largest uh, flat surface that is vertical. Or, so you can keep on building on those abstractions to have like detecting some more complex objects. One of those uh, key difficulties is uh, relocalization. So for example, if I use my AR device here, and then I go away, uh, when I come back, if I have elements in space, then I need to know that they are still there and it, they are back when I'm back. So that's actually a pretty tricky problem. Uh, I was trying to think about a way to make you experience it, but it's a bit tricky. It's a bit like you close your eyes and then a friend brings you somewhere else and then you open your eyes and you're like, okay, where, where am I actually? So you need to find similar um, markers or point of interest that allow you to compare where you were before. It's a hard problem. It's I, yeah, it's a hard problem. Uh, in terms of browser and uh, the implementation of the specifications, if you just use the normal RGB camera, then you use a marker, for example, uh, it works on pretty much anything. If you use more experimental hardware, well, you'll have to go to other lenses for now. Uh, yeah, the different browsers, so you have Argon, uh, like I said, from Georgia Tech. Uh, Chromium, so from Google with WebAR, you have the Mozilla WebXR Viewer that you can use on your iPhone already now, uh, and a bunch of different libraries. But, uh, I'm not going to explore all those, just for the um, Holland, um, for the Magic Leap. That's a cool video, I don't have time to show it to you, uh, but it's like one vision of AR uh, that, in my opinion, is quite dystopic. Uh, where you have so much information and a, a lot about manipulation. So I think it's, that's why I'm excited to present it to you today at FOSDEM. Uh, I think AR is pretty exciting, it's pretty cool, but then in the end, it's what you can do with it. So it means what you guys can build with it. So exact that's also the new best. So it's pretty straightforward architecture, so I can just keep that. Uh, you will see it after, it will make more sense, don't worry about it. Uh, license, MIT, uh, I'll do a little example. So that's, oh yeah, we'll see, the network allows. So that's, that's the result. Uh, okay, no, we don't want to do this. So that's a point cloud, uh, all the little dots you see, thanks to the depth camera. And then you can put element in space. So those, for example, are my nodes that I just put in space. And then I can move around, uh, interact with them, make them smaller or bigger. And then 
thanks to the different marker, it makes in space. If I go somewhere else and come back, it will localize again and put the notes back in the right position. So, deconstruction of... Um, so, <laughs> that's the moment. Uh, let's see how it's... If you have questions, that might also be the time. But let's, let's try just at all if it works. I'm not religious, but if I was, it would be the moment I would pray. Okay, let's try. I can see you guys, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> you will see. Hopefully, everything works. You'll see yourself too. Maybe. So, uh, I need to make sure it's connected. Yes, it's connected. Uh, so, I need to remember now which it was. Yes. And I'll explain a bit more. Maybe not. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so. Well, I hope I have the same IP address, otherwise I need to kick around a bit more. Yay! So, okay, <laughs> I'll explain a bit. So you see what I'm seeing in the headset from the browser. So on the headset, I think I can actually, let me see if I can move. So <coughs> That's a bit abstract, but I'll explain. So what do you think is the blue box? Do you see a blue box? Yes. 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 What do you think it is? That's my eye. So I can see, I get the position of where my, each of my eyes looking. And then what is the gray uh, area? Okay, easier one. What's the red area? It's a flat surface. And then the gray area is basically, maybe if I look at you guys, what is the gray area? It's a 3D mesh uh, that's being constructed of the room. Okay. Oh, that work. Nice. So, one of the biggest difficulty, to be honest, that's, that's why I insisted to make this one demo work, is that um, it's really hard to convey. It's a, like a personal, individual experience. Uh, it's a bit out there still. So to have uh, the video running so that you can see it, well, that wasn't working yesterday. So that was a good surprise. So a little bit more example. Oh, that was the backup, but I guess we can just keep that. Let's see. Yeah, so that was another simple example with a little 3D scene added on top. Um, so how did it actually work? Getting entangled cables. So some of the basic functions, so like I see, like I said before, uh, or actually like you guys said before, uh, the blue cube is basically eye tracking. So you have your position in um, space on a 2D plane of where the eye is looking at. Uh, some of the basic functions uh, are to get the mesh of the room, uh, to get the red um, planes, um, then hand tracking or eye tracking. So eye tracking also allows you to do more fun stuff. So that was yesterday at the JavaScript stand. Uh, and that was yesterday afternoon. So everything is super fresh. My first uh, proper component for ExoKit, which is totally useless, but, uh, so that was a bit actually earlier this morning. Uh, so I start the, um, the code that I, made and then it loads the exokit which is kind of a browser but not I'll explain a bit uh, in a while so that loading moment is always a bit of suspense so what's happening so I have a, a 3d scene super basic just the primitives and then it blinks we change color rather when I blink so What's, what's the point of this? I'll explain it a little bit more at the end, but basically that's another way to interact and something you cannot do basically with any device. So how is it done more precisely? So I warned you before about the ugly code. I think it's now, yes, it's now. So it's ugly, but it's working because I just work on prototypes and proof of concept. So I don't have to be code that's beautiful and maintainable. 
kind of works. And I put like console logs everywhere. And just because after like, I can put two in a row just because I don't know what's happening. I don't know those APIs. So that's the kind of exploration I do. So basically, can you actually see? Yes. So who is familiar with A-Frame? Just out of curiosity, okay. Same guy who tried before. Um, so A-Frame is basically how to do 3D on the web, either for VR, for AR, or just for 3D. Uh, it's using web components, so it's basically some kind of uh, HTML, super basic. So for example, to have a box, you have a box. To have a sphere, you have a sphere. To have, I mean, you get it by now. So what I do, and once I have those entities, is I had a little component, so I register this component, which I call link. Uh, then I, I get the entity where it is. I store the very uh, magic uh, function, so that's the magic leap specific API. Uh, then I can see actually I do have data on eye tracking, and uh, then every tick, so it's about few milliseconds. Uh, if I do have data on my eye, and it is actually blinking, I change the color. So it's actually, if it was presented a little bit better, it's really, really clear, really simple, and yeah, it's just straight from the browser. I'm using Glitch. I don't know if you use Glitch, but it's a way to um, host a web page for free, and then you can run it everywhere. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good on time. Um, so now that <laughs> it actually works, the, the trickiest part, let's say, which is not about technology, which is a lot more about, okay, you got all those new sensors, and we saw about IoT before, but then it has consequences. I'm pretty excited by, by this kind of devices, but that's, an, um, uh, that's a house of a colleague, and then after that he used his HoloLens, uh, then you have basically, I don't know if you can, yeah, it's a bit tricky to see, but here you have like a semi-transparent plane if you have a little bit of pain. So you're outside of his house, but thanks to the model built by the device, you still have this kind of information. So if you start, I don't know if you heard about the augmented reality cloud or the AR cloud, that's very practical because I bego before I go to see my friend's place, and I can already see where it is. But if my friend is not my friend anymore, because I've done some silly presentation, say so that's enough, I need to stop seeing you. Well, I still have access eventually to this data. Or worst, if we're not even friends, but I mean, you know about security, you know that it's not perfect. Well, if anybody else, uh, like an adversarial, uh, can have access to the information, that's a lot of problem. So those kind of devices are so exciting because you can do so much with it, but that comes again with a lot of uh, constraint on what actually information you can share and how to do it. Uh, so I recommend, yes, uh, those blog posts uh, on the Mozilla blog. And then how, how to do it more precisely? Well, uh, you need a bit of information, like actually how does the device work? Uh, so you need to have workshops or presentation or help users to actually understand what are the consequences of their action, basically. And well, then, you know the guy in the t-shirt, right? So to, little, to give a little bit of perspective, uh, so that was Mark in case you don't, uh, a little bit of perspective, I was earlier in Brussels uh, this week at the CPDP conference on data protection and democracy. Um, how, actually, maybe that's one of the most important non-technical part of the talk is a great book that started an article, maybe some of you have read it, on the age of surveillance capitalism. So that's, I'm excited by this. That's cool. I can do a lot of stuff. But then it's also sold by companies. It's also uh, some of the stack is open, some is not. Uh, and those companies have an agenda. Uh, does it fit precisely with your lifestyle if you need? Maybe, maybe not. And if it doesn't, well, maybe if it happens once again with Facebook, with Google, uh, with others, well, if that pattern is there, then maybe it's not by luck. So I really recommend this kind of um, uh, book or she has also a shorter article on the topic, but there is a logic behind it which of course lead me to you. Uh, somebody asked me yesterday, I was uh, looking all dorky next to the uh, canteen, trying to finish the presentation, thinking, oh shit, it's never going to work. Uh, and then somebody came, looked a little bit at me, like, oh, does he see me or not? And then that person uh, asked, okay, that's, so I showed him a bit what it was, and it's like, but what is it for? So I have a bunch of ideas. Uh, I don't know if they're good or bad, but it doesn't really matter. 
So AR is for what you want it to be. That's also why it's first then, that's also why it's open source and uh, free software. It's because you have the capacity to make it happen. You have the capacity to actually implement. We good. Um, so it means I don't know what it is for. I have a bunch of ideas. Uh, I think um, I'll, I'll show you one little. Uh, but the point is, it's for you to implement. So Exokit uh, is on MIT license, uh, A-Frame is a uh, Mozilla license, and those are just examples still. Um, so this little video is from a friend who was at the MIT Magic Leap Hackathon two or three weeks ago, basically, uh, and they did an interface, um, a binary interface, how you can navigate in space using um, just a yes, no option. If you cannot see, I'll zoom actually a bit more. Um, if I can. Oh. Well, let's do it. So it's a person in a wheelchair because he or she cannot move anything except his eyes. So that's the kind of usage you can, you can think of. You can use augmented reality for eye tracking and then for somebody who would not be able to use VR and AR uh, for this kind of experiences. Uh, also, like I said, I work uh, for UNICEF and the Innovation Fund, so that's the kind of, sort of application usage you can use it for. So, little bits out there uh, that you can use to explore. Few references and some of the doc. And uh, the slides, which I don't know if you can... Is it high quality enough to scan it? You'll see anyway, it's on, it's on the website. So, I have three minutes for questions. Or you get everything and then you no need for question. How much does the device cost? Too much. <laughs> Three thousand. Like I said, for um, to play at home, uh, maybe not. If you need to work with it, um, it's okay. And again, so for fun, it's not worth it. Uh, for exploration to work on it, it's worth it. And then if you do any kind of software project, I don't know, you charge minimum 10,000 for a project that make any kind of sense. So 3,000 for 10 minimum thousand euros, it's still not negligible, but it's not that much really, in my opinion. Yeah. You say you work for Intuitive and yeah. Yeah. What kind of application do you see for them? <laughs> So um, I see a bunch of application, but the thing, the beauty of, um, of the innovation fund is we don't, we tried actually before to say, hey, uh, you have a problem. So I was in Ghana in Nigeria last week, no, two weeks ago. Uh, and we, we tried before to say, hey, um, you in Ghana, your problem is this, your solution is that, that didn't work. So now what we do, uh, we search entrepreneurs for profit companies so that the wealth after and the knowledge that spread in the local ecosystem, um, to actually implement those solutions, because we don't know. So we have ideas, we have technology we focus on, like whatever you, the IoT, um, IoT, blockchain, decentralization, uh, machine learning, AI, VR, AR, and on the web. So we have technology, we identify some places with problems, but how, what is the technical solution? That's precisely not up to us. We evaluate the different startups that uh, apply to the fund, but after that, it's, it's really up to them. So. 30 seconds. Last question. Get everything. Uh, I'll be outside then. Uh, and if you have more questions because you're a little bit shy, don't worry. I'm there for like 25 minutes. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.